Suppose we have a large number of 2x1 dominoes and 2x2 squares, and we want to completely tile the 2xn grid with no overlaps. When n equals 1, there is only one such tiling pictured here, where we place one domino vertically. When n equals 2, things get a bit more interesting. We can place the dominoes vertically, horizontally, or we can place one single square, so there are three total tilings. We can continue gathering data by trying the n equals 3 grid. In this case, we can list out all of the tilings. Once we do that, we see there are five total tilings of the 2 by 3 board. We can even go further and try the n equals 4 board. In this case, we list them all out, and if we do our work carefully, we can be systematic about how we compute the tilings, and we'll see that there is a total of 11 such tilings on the 2x4 board. Let's go through one more example and gather one more piece of data, this time figuring out how many tilings there are on the 2x5 board. Can we use the data that we've gathered to figure out how many ways you can do this no matter what n is? For example, here's one such tiling on the 2x20 board. Can we figure out how many total tilings there are on this 2x20 board? If we continue gathering data for this sequence, which we'll call j sub n, we get the numbers 1, 3, 5, 11, 21, and so on pictured here. Let's figure out how to find a recursive formula for these numbers. If we let j sub n be the number of ways of tiling the n board, we see that we can split the number of tilings into three disjoint situations based on the first tile. So we know that we're going to add three situations together, where first we have a vertical tile, or we start with two horizontal tiles, or we start with a square tile. In the first instance where there's a vertical tile, there's j sub n minus one ways to tile the rest. And in the other two situations, we're left with an n minus two board, so there's j sub n minus two ways to tile the remaining board. Therefore, j sub n is equal to j sub n minus 1 plus j sub n minus 2 plus j sub n minus 2, which simplifies to j sub n minus 1 plus 2 times j sub n minus 2. Therefore, the number of tilings that we're interested in satisfies this recursion with the initial conditions j1 equals 1 and j2 equals 3. Can we use this recurrence and the initial conditions to find a closed formula? Let's explore the intuition about how to think about these kinds of recurrences. Our goal is to find a closed form for a recursively defined sequence. We'll start with our example that we just discovered, j sub n, where the recursion is jn equals jn minus 1 plus 2 jn minus 2, and j1 equals 1 and j2 equals 3. Starting with this recurrence, we can leave off the first term, and we have a recurrence that is almost geometric. Or, we can start with the recurrence and leave off the second term, and we have a sequence that is geometric. Since we see the repeated multiplication by 2, a naive guess would be that jn equals 2 to the n. And it turns out that this sequence does satisfy the recursion. 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 times 2 to the n minus 2 is equal to 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1. But that's just two copies of 2 to the n minus 1. And when we perform that multiplication, we have 2 to the n. We see that the recurrence above is satisfied by the sequence 2 to the n. Unfortunately, this is not a solution because it fails to satisfy the initial conditions of the J sequence. Because we saw that a geometric sequence almost worked, we might guess that Jn is geometric so that it's of the form r to the n for some r. Plugging r in, we have that this equation must be satisfied. We subtract all the terms to the left, and then we can factor out an r to the n minus 2. Finally, we can factor the quantity r squared minus r minus 2 into r minus 2 times r plus 1. This equation means that r is 0, r is 2, or r is equal to negative 1. Once again, we have a problem. We can see that r equals 0 leads to the 0 sequence, so it's not that. We've already seen that r equals 2 doesn't satisfy the initial conditions, and you can check that r equals negative 1 will not work as well. But now we have a refined idea. We're going to guess that it's built from geometric sequences, and the natural guess is that jn equals a times 2 to the n plus b times minus 1 to the n, where a and b are constants. We can use our data for n equals 1 to get this equation, and we can use our data for n equals 2 to get a second equation. Now we have two equations in two unknowns. The first one is 1 equals 2a minus b, and the second one is 3 equals 4a plus b. 
we can use some algebraic techniques to solve for a and b and find that a is two thirds and b is one third. Sure enough, if we plug these into our equation, we now have a closed formula for j sub n, and you can check it against the data above and see that this is a closed formula for the sequence we were interested in. The process we just discovered leads to something known as the characteristic roots theorem. If you have a sequence an that satisfies the recurrence an plus alpha an minus 1 plus beta an minus 2 equals 0, then the characteristic equation of this sequence is x squared plus alpha x plus beta equals 0. Now we have a theorem that if an does satisfy the recurrence an plus alpha an minus 1 plus beta an minus 2 equals 0, and r1 and r2 are two distinct roots of the characteristic equation x squared plus alpha x plus beta equals 0, then an is given by the closed form a r1 to the n plus b r2 to the n, where a and b are constants determined by the initial conditions. Let's see this theorem in action for the Fibonacci sequence defined by fn equals fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2, where f0 is 0 and f1 is 1. We see that the recurrence can be rewritten as fn minus fn minus 1 minus fn minus 2 equals 0, so alpha is negative 1 and beta is negative 1, which means the characteristic equation is x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Using the quadratic equation, we can solve for x and find the two roots to be 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, using these two roots, we have that f sub n is equal to a times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n plus b times 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n. We can plug in the two initial conditions and solve for a and b to find this closed formula, which is known as the Binet formula for the Fibonacci sequence. There is a chance that the characteristic equation has two roots, but they're exactly the same. In the situation that the characteristic equation has only one repeated root, then the formula for the sequence is a n equals a times r to the n plus b times n times r to the n, where a and b are constants. Try this theorem out for yourself. Suppose the sequence rn is given by rn equals 6rn minus 1 minus 9rn minus 2 with r0 equals 1 and r1 equals 4. Find the characteristic equation of this sequence and find its only repeated root. Then use the theorem to find a closed formula for r sub n. Note, you will have to use algebra or an algebraic package to solve for the two unknowns a and b. Let's finish this video with a challenge problem where you have to find a recursion and then use the characteristic roots theorem. Let's try to determine the number of lattice paths starting at the origin 0, 0 and ending at the line x equals n minus 1, where we're only allowed steps of the form 1, 1, which is over 1 and up 1, 1 minus 1, which is over 1 and down 1, or 2, 0, which is two steps to the right. For example, if we let the line be x equals 0, we see p1 is 1. There's one way to do this. When we have the line x equals 1, so p2, there's two paths that get me from the origin to the line. When n equals 3, so that we have the line x equals 2, it turns out that p3 is a total of five such paths pictured here. When we move the line to x equals 3, so we're looking for when n is 4, we get a total of 12 paths, so p4 is 12. Now we move the line to n equals 5, which is x equals 4, and we see that in this situation we get even more paths. So p5, after counting, is equal to 29. Let's go through and compute two more data points by listing out all the paths from 0, 0 to the line x equals 5, which is going to give me a value for p6, in this case, p6 is 70. And then we can move the line to x equals 6, which is going to give me a value for p7. After counting all the lines, we have p7 is equal to 169. And this process continues. Can you see how to think about the paths recursively so that you can find a recursive formula for p sub n? Once you have the recursive formula, can you find a closed form using the characteristic equation and the characteristic roots technique? Once you have that, can you use your closed form to find out how many lattice paths there are when n equals 20? So how many lattice paths there are from 0, 0 to the line x equals 19?